Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 Curse of Apocalypse Spawn action figure. This is essentially a paint variation of the Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. This is a yellow and black paint scheme. This one comes with a mace. Let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. As you see at the top, 14 points for articulation, McFarlane toys, got the Spawn logo there, Mortal Kombat 11. This is a McFarlane Gold Label Edition. Now in America, the Gold Label Edition figures are available at Walmart. I believe in Canada, they're available in Toys R Us. Spawn at the bottom. There's a bunch of credits. And here's the barcode in case that helps anybody. One side, got Spawn post up here. Other side, says Mortal Kombat 11 on the back. Spawn's post up, holding his mace. Now, I got my figure from Walmart.com, just stumbled upon him, and noticed he was sold out the next day, so I'm glad I got him when I did. So, with no further ado, let's open him up. Alright, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He does go with a display stand and a mace. But before we take a look at the accessories, let's take a look at the actual figure. So, this is Spawn as he appeared from Mortal Kombat 11, but this is a yellow repainted version. Curse of Apocalypse, I will say the original figure is absolutely amazing. And this really isn't anything new. It is a new paint job. So starting with his head here, he's got green eyes, the yellow around his face here. You can see the yellow on his collar. It's kind of dirty, a lot of texturing. Very nicely done. Got some skulls with a chain down here. Yellow highlights with a black suit, spikes all over it. The cape also has that sort of dirty look to it, just texturing and weathering all over it. Very nice job, McFarlane. Looks like double-jointed elbows, double-jointed knees. I think this color scheme looks excellent. Not as good as the original, but it's a very worthy paint variant. And here's a closer look at his face. I really like the way the colors contrast. The yellow, the black, the green eyes. He has that mouthless face here. The detail on his cape and collar is fantastic. I find this figure very visually pleasing. He even has little yellow highlights all around his sort of chain skull belt. Even inside the eyes and nose here, you can see it's yellow tinted. Pretty nice attention to detail there. Now let's look at his accessories. And let's start with the boring stuff. So first of all, he has this McFarlane stand. Typical McFarlane stand, black perfect circle. It says Mortal Kombat at the bottom. He's got one peg for the peggles on his feet. It's very thin, very basic. Now let's look at his mace. I was very happy this figure was going to come with the mace, as it's the only weapon I don't have from Spawn. The original red and black version had three different variations. I got the sword version, which was the most sought after, but there was also a battle axe and a mace version. I didn't bother picking those up because it was essentially the exact same figure, just with a different accessory. They later came out with a white bloodied spawn and he came with the battle axe. And now this Curse of Apocalypse spawn has the mace. So I finally have all three accessories. So let's take a look at it. It's spiked at the top. The detail looks very nice. A little spawn face up there. Going further down, the handle has some red wrap on it. Nice sculpting and texturing there. Pretty nice accessory. Mine does appear to be a little bit warped, so I'm going to get some hot water and see if I can't correct that. I ended up dipping this thing into a cup of boiling water, and the warpage pretty much corrected itself. Good to go now. Here are all three of the different spawn weapons, the mace, the sword, and the battle axe. My battle axe is bloodied up, I wouldn't mind a clean version, but I am happy to have all three of these weapons without having to buy the red spawn three different times. And then here's spawn holding the mace. And of course, he can hold the other spawned weapons as well. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, sitting at about 7.3 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18.5 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down about that much. Can tilt his head from one side to the other, giving him a nice amount of personality there. 
shoulders on a ball joint. You can go up more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest here, just increasing the range of motion. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows below that. And the armor here is going to obstruct it from going any further than that. Whether you get the top or the bottom part of the joint in there, it's still going to obstruct it. His wrist here has a ball in it. It can rotate around and it's going to be hinged as well. It's got a ball joint in his torso. It can rotate around. It can also go forward and back. Another ball joint in his waist. It can also rotate around and go forward and back. Giving him a very nice range of motion in his torso here. His legs go about this far. Not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. There's essentially no rotation here. They can go forward about that far and back about that much. He's got double jointed knees below that. It goes all the way back. And then his ankle here, even though you can't see it, it does have a ball in it. It goes forward and back. It can rotate. It can also tilt and rock. The other example, the other ankle is a much better example. Up and down, rotate, tilt and rock, and toe articulation. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures, starting off with some other McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. Here he is, next to the original red and black version of the Mortal Kombat spawn. I do prefer the red and black version as it's more of his iconic classic colors, but this yellow version is really cool looking as well. There is 100% reuse on the sculpt, absolutely no new parts on this guy. Which one do you guys think's better? I'm a sucker for the traditional looking spawn, but I can see why some people might prefer this one. Drop me a line in the comments below. And here he is, next to the white and red, bloodied up variation of Mortal Kombat spawn. Also a pretty cool looking figure. And here are all three different paint variations of the Mortal Kombat spawn McFarland has made so far. We do know there's an upcoming blue and gray version. It's going to be referred to as Lord Covenant spawn. Hoping to be able to secure one of those as well. Now paint variations have become quite the thing with McFarlane's Mortal Kombat line. Here are all the regular versions of the characters they've made from the game. There's a total of nine different characters in front of you. And you got to keep in mind, Spawn's not actually a Mortal Kombat character. He was just an extra playable character in the game. Like I said, paint variations are pretty excessive in this line. There are nine different characters, but 23 different figures in the entire collection. I'm fully caught up. Looking forward to the next variation of Spawn, and looking forward to some new characters like Cabal and Noob Cybot. Now let's look at him next to some other Spawn figures. I'm still kicking myself in the ass for not getting the Kickstarter Spawn, but here he is next to the only other McFarlane older Spawn figure that I have. And here are the rest of the Spawn figures I have in my action figure collection. From left to right, we've got a couple of the Violators in their clown form. Then we have Terry. Then of course, the Curse of Apocalypse Spawn. And then Al Simmons, that was spawned before he died and came back. And then we have a couple of Wanda figures. And one of the first things I thought when I saw the spawn figure was a Yellow Lantern Sinestro Corpse. You could use a spawn for simply a yellow variant, but I imagine there's going to be some people that are going to throw it with their big Yellow Lantern display. I personally only have the Predator, Batman, and Scarecrow, but he looks great with these guys. And now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with since this is a McFarlane Toys figure it's a 7 inch scale I'll start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work my way smaller here he is next to some of his McFarlane Toys brothers in front of you are five different action figure lines all from McFarlane Toys all from different various video game properties all 7 inch scale then next to some non video game McFarlane Toys and here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, next to some NECA figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112th Cloth Soft Goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, next to some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, here he is, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a very cool spawn figure. He's not very practical though, 
I definitely prefer his iconic red and black colors. This variant, although it looks very good, is not going to really get much use in my action figure world. I love the original Spawn figure from Mortal Kombat. Big time home run for McFarlane, and I'm going to get all the variants. But none of them are going to match the original red and black version. This guy does look fantastic. The texture on his cape and collar is great. Paint job is excellent. I really don't see any flaws. Articulation is pretty good, only lacking in the thigh area. His mace accessory is great. I'm glad that I got one of the other accessories, the third one that I needed. Overall, for to rate this guy, probably going to give him a 6.5 out of 10. I'm probably lowballing him, but he's just not going to be used as much as the red version. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.